All right, everyone, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We got ourselves a real special variety, another fig variety review for you guys today. This is Moro de Caneva, and it goes by many names because it's a very old Italian fig. Um, Nerino in France, Fico Secco in Italy. I think even the Dalloso is slightly a mutation off of this fig. Um, I could be wrong on that, but also, there's a fig in Hungar Hungary called uh, Sivarfuge, totally butchering that pronunciation. And there's another one even in Spain called Ibiza, which I believe is probably the same as well. It's a very easy fig, by the way, to identify. It's one of the easiest because if you guys look here at the figs, they have an interesting shape to them. But you can see right along where the stem attaches to the the neck of the fig. Let me zoom in, give you guys a better view. Right where that stem attaches to the neck is like these little lips. You can see one on the left and you can see one on the right on both sides. And that's just a real easy way and they all look like this. See the lip right there? Right there. So if you're confused as to whether or not your plant is indeed Moro de Caneva, I think is the real uh, original name for this variety because it's it's a fig that's been growing in Italy for some time. I mean, it's an old variety. I think I even saw a photo of this fig that I saw the mother tree and they believe it to be 500 years old. So it's a really hardy, well-adapted variety. And I have many of them here. I, have, I uh, again, have them by different names like Fico Secco and Nerino. Um, and I've planted them in this new little planting that we did of many different varieties of figs because this is one that is supposed to be very early, very hardy, very rain resistant. And as you can see, I mean, the fig looks wonderful. I've already tasted this guy. It's incredible. Um, it's got a great flavor to it. Definitely one of my favorites. You can see the leaf pattern here. This is a this is a pretty good leaf pattern right there, kind of like Villette de Bordeaux almost, but you got some over here that are more along the lines of like, sort of black mission-like, almost Aishia black. You know, that Villette de Bordeaux type leaf. Um, overall, it's just very productive and, and because it's so old, and if it really is this old, it should just do extremely well here. You know, any fig I find that's, withstood the test of time like another one that we've talked about is Campaneri. You know, any of these figs that are withstanding years of weather, you know, your, your 100 degree, your 100 year lows, your 50 year lows, you know, all that is really gonna add up. Even like a year where you get tons of rain, and it's just gonna slowly adapt over time, slowly evolve. And uh, these are the kind of figs I'm looking for. This is it right here. When someone asked me, you know, what are some of the characteristics? This is one of the biggest characteristics I look for. I don't look for newly bred hybrids or newly bred figs, like even some of the LSU varieties. I look for old heirloom figs, like old Celeste heirlooms. And uh, this one just has a lot of promise. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on it. I'm gonna, you know, really confirm some of the other synonyms. I certainly have three of them. I have Savarfuge, I have Fico Secco, I have Nerino, Moro de Caneva. The only one I'm really unsure of is the Daloso and Ibiza just yet, but so far this tastes a lot like Daloso, and that's kind of why I'm picking that up. It's got a long stem. It's easy to pick. In fact, this variety has been drying up on the tree, so it's doing well in our dry weather that we've been having. I can't really say if it's doing well in the moisture because we haven't had really much of any. Um, but it is a commercial fig, that's for sure. This is a fig, if you look up on the internet, you can find Fig Figo Moro. You can find information on this variety. Figo, like, like a Portuguese name for a fig, which is kind of strange, but they're growing this fig commercially. They have videos on it. They talk about the history of it. Uh, you know, they're saying it dates back to 500 years ago. I mean... Let's try it, guys.
It's very good. It's a lot like a Villa de Bordeaux in my mind. It's a lot. It's actually a lot like Daloso, but not exactly like a Daloso. It's got that complex berry flavor to it. It's got nice figginess. The skin has a nice flavor. Um, it's smooth. It's dense. It's jammy. I like it more than a Villa de Bordeaux. Um, it's wonderful. I don't know what else to say. This is a fig that everybody should have. I think you guys, even in warmer climates, should try it out. It should be a very productive workhorse fig for you. I mean, everything about it so far, I've been impressed. And I have probably, without really knowing it at the start of this year, but I probably have like seven or eight of these at this point. Something crazy. Um, so I should have many cuttings for people to try. This is a variety that I'm gonna be focusing on commercially. You know, when I'm starting to sell my varieties or sell the fruits, I should say. This is one that I'm gonna be looking forward to seeing what different chefs have to say and what the local clients at different, you know, maybe farmer's markets or different markets have to say about it. So I'm gonna enjoy this other half. You can see this side is not as dark, but it is a dark fig. Definitely, um, probably somewhere between 30 to 50 grams um, or 20 to 50 grams, I should say. So like it's a, it's a small to medium sized fig. Nothing crazy, but uh, yeah, that's it guys. So thank you all for watching this one. If you've been enjoying these, you know, these little tastings that we do here on the channel, check them out. There's a playlist that we have that just is a compilation of all the different tastings that we've done really from the last like three or four years. So check that out guys. I'll put that kind of right here, right somewhere over here. I don't know, but we'll talk to you soon. All right, everyone. Take care.